we've been looking at uh, creating our title blocks. In the past couple lessons, we created our individual title blocks for a size A. What I want to show you today is how we can insert our th uh, three-dimensional model into our two-dimensional drawing. If you remember, in our last lesson, we created uh, a size A title block. Okay. For our rim assignment, you're going to be inserting your rim into a size D title block. Okay. So you're going to have to recreate your title block because if we take a look, this is a size A. Um, and it's not really going to work because it's going to be too small. This is only 8.5 by 11. The size D will give us 34 by 26 or 34 by 22. Okay, so I'm going to say File New. Um, I'm going to create a drawing. And like I said, we're going to use a D landscape. The nice thing about D is it's not taking up as much room already. Uh, but you're going to want to go ahead and edit the sheet format. Um, get the majority of this stuff out of here like we did in um, the size A. All right. Once you get all this cleaned up, which I'm not going to recover that. You can watch the previous lesson on YouTube if you want to. Um, but get all this stuff cleaned up. And then what we're going to be doing is edit sheet. And we're going to be inserting our finished model. Okay. Now, important note is you want to insert your model when it's finished. However, when they are, when the model is inserted into the drawing, it becomes a linked document. So what that means is that um, if I make any changes in my model, let's say I want to go back and change the way the rim looks, it will update in the drawing here. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to View Layout, and I'm going to click on Model View, and if you come down here, it's looking for parts or assemblies to insert. So I'm going to, go to hit Browse and navigate to my desktop where my rim is located. Um, let's do all files. And my rim is located right here, rim design. I'm going to hit Open. Now, you remember when we started creating these parts, I started to stress how important planes were front, top, right side, which plane you've drawn it on. Reason being is over here are your standard views. You have front, top, and right side, right side views. If your views are incorrect or your planes are incorrect, it's because you've drawn on the uh, incorrect size. Incorrect plane, excuse me. So I'm going to place my view by simply clicking and you see it automatically drops the two-dimensional view of my front view of my rim. If I drag my mouse up at this point, automatically placing the top view. If I come down and to the right, places the right side view. And if I come up here, it'll place the isometric view. Okay? Now, um, if I take a look at this, it's not filling my sheet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my first view that I placed, which is my front view. I'm going to come down here to scale, and this is where we can go ahead and change our scale. So if I want to hit 1 to 2, you'll look, this is 1 to 2. In other words, it's half the size as drawn. The nice thing about this large printer is if we click 1 to 1, we could actually draw a full-size rim. So let's say I needed a full-size um, drawing of my rim. I could actually place a full-size front view. When I printed this, it would be full-size. So you could take a look and say, you know, how's this thing going to look in my car? Um, you could use it for mock-up purposes. You can use it for fabrication purposes. Okay. You'll also notice that um, our particular view styles still apply. So if I click on my drawing and change my view style to hidden lines, it now shows you your hidden lines, which is really cool. Everyone see that? All right. So. I'm going to go ahead and change my scale down to 1 to 2. I'm going to leave my hidden lines on. And I'm going to place my views. You remember when we drew this stuff by hand, how long it would take to go ahead and create these views with the uh, 45 degree triangles and stuff. In a matter of two minutes, I've automatically placed my views in here. Okay. In subsequent lessons, um, I'll start to cover how we can begin dimensioning this. But basically, if you come to annotation and smart dimension, you're basically smart dimensioning like we did 
in the uh, sketching phases, but the advantage is that these dimensions are drawn off of the dimensions you've already inputted into the model. So if you created a wheel that was 22 inches in diameter, when you go to smart dimension and click your outside circle, you know it's automatically going to place that dimension. It's very critical to make sure your dimensions are accurate in the model stage because when you come over here and you read 19.99 inches of diameter, obviously that's not a true wheel size. Um, and that tells me that this wheel was created a little small on the diameter side. All right, so like I said, that should be enough to get you guys started. In subsequent lessons, I'll cover how to start placing these dimensions.